Welcome back to Historical Geology. I'm continuing with Chapter 14 on Mesozoic Laurentia and particularly looking at the Cordilleran Mobile Belts or Western Laurentia. So we talked a little bit about Rodinia and the Kansas model. Then we talked about the trailing continental margin and the Atlantic model. Then we started accreting these island arcs like the antler orogeny, Sonoma orogeny. For the Cordilleran, we got we have three more events that are that are really combined into one larger scale orogeny, which they they call the Cordilleran orogeny. So we have a, a Nevada orogeny, Sevier orogeny, and the Laramide orogeny. And all these really are related to Cordilleran type tectonics where you're seeing subduction of the Farallon plate under Laurentia, under North America. Looking at our Nevada orogeny, which is the first of these three, the key thing that's going on here is the Nevada orogeny, what happened is we had those island arcs, those Nevada arcs that were offshore. We had two subduction zones going on, a foothill subduction, and then we had the subduction under the arcs out here to the, to the west. Eventually, these arcs are going to accrete and be plastered up against California. And remember, we talked about how these had the Tethian fauna. That accretion resulted in metamorphism all along the Sierra Nevada foothills. And we get a series of rocks called the Tombstone Slates. And they have a very pervasive northwest cleavage. In fact, that's also called Nevadan cleavage. All the rocks have this pervasive north, north northwest foliation from that collisional event. And remember, this is happening about Jurassic, late Jurassic, about 155 million years ago. Older, any rocks older than about 155 million years have that pervasive Nevada cleavage. And we call those the tombstone slates. But while this is happening, we're subducting the Farallon plate here. And we're seeing the dehydration, partial melting of the mantle here, mantle wedge. And we're seeing magmas forming here to form the Sierra Batholith. And that's really the main pulse or the main contribution from this Nevada orogeny is the formation of this large granitic batholith. And it just wasn't in the Sierra Nevada, but also we have the Idaho batholith uh, and then the Coast Range batholith, which is uh, farther to the north along the coast between Washington State and up into Canada. And then to the south in, in Southern California, we have the Peninsular batholith, which goes down into Baja California. And then other things I want to point out here is this is the old Maloney's vault, vault zone. So I'll put Mel Maloney's fault zone here. That's the old foothill subduction that's right in here. And we have those old oceanic plates that were accreted during that time. The other thing is because we had that accretionary event in Nevada Naraji, we trapped some ocean lithosphere under the Central Valley, and that's called the Coast Range Ophiolite. Coast Range Ophiolite. And then we make a, a basin here. We call it the Four Arc Basin. And we're collecting sediment, primarily eroding off the Sierra Nevada coming down here. And that's a Great Valley sequence, or the Central Valley of California. And we have a series of Mesozoic rocks and, and into the Cenozoic that really fill in this basin. And one important thing here, this has up to 30,000 feet of sediment. So it's a very thick basin. Today, uh, there's quite a bit of hydrocarbons and oil exploration that's done in this Great Valley sequence. So we have the Sierra Nevada mag magmatic arc. We have the foothills terrain that was accreted during the Nevada orogeny. We've developed this fork basin, which is the Great Valley sequence. We have that trapped ocean lithosphere, which is really an ophiolite called the Coast Range Ophiolite. Then we have this accretionary wedge, right? This accretionary prism subduction zone. And that's what we call the Franciscan subduction zone. You'll see that this is going to be the future coast ranges. So that's our Mesozoic California. We have the Sierra Magmatic Arc, Western Foothills Metamorphic Belt here, the Central Valley or the Great Valley, which is going to deposit these Mesozoic and Cenozoic Great Valley sequence rocks. And then we have the subduction zone, which includes these high pressure, low temperature metamorphic rocks called blue schist, only forming subduction zones. We have the Franciscan complex or Franciscan subduction. Remember the word melange is a French word which means mixed up. So all the pieces of ocean lithosphere are scraped up and all scattered in through here. This chaotic mixture of rocks in the melange. We have the Farallon plate subducting in the ocean trench here. And then farther to the west in the Pacific Ocean, we have the East Pacific Rise. And the Pacific plate is still off over here to the west. 
Again, we're looking at this Nevada Narajan being the first phase of, Cordier, of this Cordillera Narajan. It's mid to late Jurassic, about 155 million years. We're, we talked about those two subduction zones that were forming. And as North American plate moved westward, right? So remember, there's, there's rifting going on. We're opening the Atlantic Ocean. North America is moving westward. It's overriding that subduction zone, that Farallon plate. And one interesting thing that we should note is when we look at that East Pacific rise today, we find that the East Pacific rise is not in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's off to the east side of the Pacific Ocean here, whereas the Mid-Atlantic region is right down the middle. The reason why it's not in the middle is because as we rift Pangaea, we're moving South America, North America, and it's overriding those oceanic plates. In fact, South America is, is consuming the Nazca plate here. North America overrode the Farallon plate, but there's still a little bit of those Farallon, little couple pieces of the Farallon plate still remain. This plate here is called the Cocos plate. That's part of the Farallon plate. And then the other little part is up here called the Juan de Fuca and Gorda plates in Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. So those are the vestiges or remains of that once large Farallon plate. As we approach the Nevada Narajani, note we have a, an ocean trench here. So that's that foothill subduction, that Maloney's fault zone. And then we have this marine arc in here. And note that they call this McLeod. So it seems like they have mostly the McLeod fauna. The terrains that are coming in farther west, those are most, mostly this Tethian fauna here. But here's that other subduction zone, which is going to be the Franciscan over here. And then once the Nevada Narajani occurs, we're going to have collision and we're going to get these tombstone slates, that Nevadan cleavage. So that's pervasive north-northwest foliation. Wherever you go in the Sierra Nevada foothills, you'll see these rocks sticking up. And the miners, that's what they called them. They looked like tombstones, so they called them tombstone slates. So again, the Nevada Narajani clogs up the subduction zone. We have the Maloney's Vault Zone, which is no longer active. We trapped a piece of ocean lithosphere, which is that Coast Range Ophiolite. Then we start seeing that Franciscan subduction. That's going to be the, the future coast ranges. So here about 150 million years ago, Nevada Rajani. And then now we're seeing quite a bit of partial melting and we're forming the very large batholith for the Sierra Nevada. And then the Nevada um, volcanoes, the Sierra Nevada uh, volcanoes are going to be up above these. Most of these are eroded away today. And so those Cordilleran batholiths I talked about, so there's a the Peninsular Batholith, which goes into Baja California down here. There's the Sierra Nevada. Some granitic rocks along the coast ranges in Northern California, the Klamath Mountains, and up into the Southern Oregon. Then we have that Idaho Batholith. Then we have a very long and extensive coast range Batholith that starts off in Washington State and goes up into, all the way up into Alaska along the coast here through British Columbia. And so Batholith, remember the definition or the textbook definition is you have 40 or more individual plutons or magma chambers that coalesce and they have to cover an area that's at least 100 square kilometers so these are areas are much larger than 100 square kilometers so in fact 100 square kilometers might be kind of an area like down in here so these are huge batholiths uh, so quite a bit of production at a convergent margin so um, that's the other thing we should add here is that once we get to this type of setting this is what we call the Andean type model so that adds another model to tectonics on the western United States. We started with Kansas model, Atlantic model, Japan model, and Dean model. At some point, we got to get the Pacific plate up against California like it is today. And that's going to be the California model. That's coming up in the Cenozoic. And then now here we're looking at late Jurassic. So after the orogeny, we no longer have subduction in the foothills, but we have subduction here along the coast ranges. And so note that we have volcanoes. So that's our Sierra Nevada magmatic arc that's forming uh, during this time. And remember the Franciscan subduction, we're seeing that Farallon plate subducting. There's partial melting. We have that the Great Valley turbidites and Great Valley sequence, the Coast Range Ophiolite that was trapped in there. And this is just showing some of those turbidites that are forming. As we go on through the Cretaceous, you'll see that most of the Sierra Nevada batholith, most of the magmas are between... 80 to 100 million years old, so they're really Cretaceous in age. But we notice that over time, the angle of subduction got more shallow during this Cretaceous activity, and we see activity or magmatism moving from west to east. So here, it's a steeper subduction, and we're seeing volcanoes here. But as we move subduction farther or make it shallower, magmatism moves farther to the east. In this case, they're showing uh, Idaho. 
So looking at our at our model here, as we change the subduction angle, so we see shallowing subduction angle, early Cretaceous. Here is a distance arc trench gap, right? The distance between the arc and, and the trench, and we see that fairly. So here, an example, I have maybe a 50 degree subduction angle. We see partial melting. The key thing is that occurs when this ocean lithosphere reaches 100 kilometers. You get that that dehydration, and remember that water being added to the mantle is lowering the melting point of peridotite and we produce magmas. But here in the Lake Cretaceous, we change that angle to maybe 30 degrees, so it's more shallow. Now our arc trench gap has a wider distance, so it's farther, which means we have a sh we're not reaching 100 kilometers until we reach farther to the east in terms of the Farallon plate. What this happens in this Cretaceous event, we start seeing this kind of back arc thrusting, this pushing because of the shallowing angle. And that's where the Sevier orogeny occurs, this back art thrusting in this mostly Cretaceous event. So when we look at the Sevier orogeny, thrusting occurred progressively farther east, Idaho Washington border, second phase of the Cordilleran orogeny. It was mostly a Cretaceous event, and we started seeing the shallowing of that Farallon plate. And here they call it thin skin tectonics because we're taking some of these slices and we're thrusting them over the top of younger rock. So in other words, we're taking old rock, older rock, and pushing it on top of younger rock. Some elements of the Sevier, and eventually we'll look at the Laramide orogeny. Here we have a cross-section seeing Franciscan subduction of, and the Farallon plate here. We have the Great Valley sequence, the Fork Basin, the Plutonism, magmatism that's occurring with the Sierra Nevada magmatic arc. And then uh, what's a little different here is uh, this area that's kind of shaded in white in the Cenozoic, really beginning about 40 million years ago to about 16, or really to present time, this is experienced extension. So this area was was much smaller, right? So so they're not really showing it in here. Um, so that because that doesn't happen till the Cenozoic. But what happens in this fold and thrust belt is we're seeing that Sevier orogeny. And eventually, even when we get to the Laramide, we're going to see even more flattening of that subduction of the Farallon plate, and we'll see deformation even farther to the east. So they're showing some of those features that we're seeing even farther to the east. One of the elements of the Sevier orogeny is where, where you're thrusting these older rocks on top of younger rocks is this idea of the keystone thrust. thrust. And this keystone thrust is exposed in western Las Vegas uh, in the Spring Mountains. And what we see here, we see Paleozoic strata, primarily Cambrian strata, the Bonanza King formation that we see in Death Valley, being thrust over the top of Jurassic strata, primarily these red sandstones, which belong to a series of rocks called the Aztec sandstones, which are Jurassic. They're about the same age as a Wingate sandstone, um, and they sit on top of the Chinle formation, which is below it, but they're red sandstones. Uh, they indicate red beds, uh, continental settings, maybe uh, desert dune type environments. And here we're seeing this keystone thrust where it's taking these Bonanza King formation, these older Cambrian rocks, and throw them in over, over the top of the, of some, here's the Chinle formation, there's the Aztec sandstone right there, uh, Mesozoic rocks. And so here's another view of it, Bonanza King formation. So we, it's really distinctive because these, these Cambrian limestones are kind of gray, purpley in color and then the Aztec sandstone is very it's a red sandstone and here's a very dramatic photo showing the Aztec sandstone and then we're seeing these older camera rocks over the top looking at Google Earth here here we're looking at well we got coastal California Los Angeles and I want to zoom in to Las Vegas which is right in here in fact those are the spring mountains that we're I'm going to look at and as we zoom in there's Las Vegas and so we're going west northwest of Las Vegas and as we go through here, you could already start seeing that keystone thrust. So these red rocks and these white rocks, these are all part of those Mesozoic rocks. And then these gray rocks, there is a fault right there. These are all Cambrian Paleozoic rocks that are being thrust over the top of these Mesozoic rocks. So here's a good classic example of that keystone thrust. We're thrusting this material over the top. And you can see the layers of this Paleozoic strata. Again, this is all occurring along the back arc thrust from that Sevier orogeny.